This section is entitled, Your First Model-Based Reinforcement Learning Program. In this section, we will first take a closer look at the value functions, the state value function, and the state action function. Then we'll look at the process of policy improvement for model-based iterative policy evaluation and improvement. Then we'll launch into a, an R example of a model-based MDP, We'll then take a closer look at the discount factor and how that can affect policy. And then we'll look at another R example that utilizes the discount factor. So in this video, the title is Policy Evaluation and Iteration. And here we'll take a closer look at the value functions. We'll describe the evaluate improved policy iteration cycle, and we'll go into an example of moving a pawn are taking a closer look at model-based reinforcement learning algorithms. We previously said that the aim of model-based learning is to find the optimal policy and value functions. We're working with a model of the environment as an MDP and the transition probabilities are known. With an MDP, policies only depend on the current state and not on its history. Further, policies are stationary, which means they don't change over the passage of time. The objective is to maximize the expected cumulative reward over time. There are two value functions that are pertinent. The state value function, V sub pi given S, for an MDP is the expected reward starting from state S and then following policy pi. Thus, the state value function quantifies the value of being in a particular state with a given policy. In contrast, the state action value function, Q sub R given S and A, is the expected reward starting from state S, but then taking action A and then following policy pi. So the state action value function quantifies the value of being in a state S and then taking some action A and then following policy pi. While we can say that pi can be any policy, pi star denotes the optimal one with the highest expected cumulative reward. We say that the optimal value functions specify the best possible policy, and we also note that an MDP is solved when the optimal value functions are known. So how does policy iteration work? Given that there's some initial policy, pi sub zero, the approach to policy iteration and improvement is to evaluate some policy, pi sub i, and to find the corresponding value function, v pi sub i. Then we try to explore improving the policy over v sub pi using greedy exploration. This process of evaluating pi sub zero to find v sub pi sub zero, and then to improve pi sub i and evaluate v sub pi sub i continues until there's a convergence on optimal policy pi star. And you see that reflected at the bottom of the slide here. We, we begin with what can be an arbitrary policy pi sub zero. We ev evaluate it to find its value function. Then we seek to improve our initial arbitrary policy pi sub zero to pi sub one, we evaluate it to find its value function. We continue to try to improve the policies and evaluate to find their value functions until we eventually converge on pi sub star, which is the optimal policy function. So let's look at an example here in R. Moving a pawn, and you see our friendly pawn there in state S zero. And the goal, the objective is to move him to state S7. The actions are up, down, left, or right. There are actually eight states because observe that the first one is S sub zero and the last one's S sub seven. And the rewards in all states are zero except for S4 where the reward is minus 10 and you can pass through S4 and S7 where the reward is plus 10. So we go over to R. First thing you have to do is load the MDP toolbox package now, note we breezed over it in the slide, but this is an important point, and that is there is a randomness to the actual direction taken. That is, 
there were four directions up, down, left, or right. But if you choose one of those actions, say up, there's an 80% probability that you'll actually go up. And there's a 10% probability that the agent will move in a lateral direction, either left or right, to the one chosen. So we've deliberately introduced this notion of randomness in the actual action direct direction taken, or stochasticity. This is really the hallmark of model-based algorithms and programs in reinforcement learning, that you, you know the transition probabilities. They, they are not deterministic. They are not with certainty, usually. And you solve for the value functions with that critical part of the reinforcement learning model, the, the transition probabilities. And furthermore, representing the transition probabilities is probably the hardest part of representing an MDP. You do this with a series of matrices, and we'll describe this briefly. Note that the matrices must be square. That is, they must have the same number of rows and columns, which must be equal to the number of states that you have in your problem. Furthermore, the sum of the probabilities in any one row must equal 1. And we create separate matrices representing the position where the pawn is and the position where the pawn will likely end up given taking one of the actions up, down, left, or right. So how do we read this? Well, if the pawn is in S0 and chooses to go up, there's an 80% chance that the pawn will actually go up and end up in state S3. But there's a 10% chance the pawn will bounce off against the left wall, won't be able to leave, and will remain in state S0 because of the lateral left move. And there's a 10% chance because of the lateral right move that the pawn will move right to state S1. That's how you read these. The columns represent where the pawn is moving to, that is the probability that the pawn will move to a particular state given that he starts off in, in the case of row 1, state S0. Case of row 2, he's in state S1. Case of row 3, he is in state S2. And the probabilities represent the state the pawn will move to. Once you figure this out, how to do this, um, you can set up the whole problem quickly, okay? But this takes a little thinking, and uh, if you have a large problem space, it can be time-consuming to set up these matrices. So there we go. We set those up, representing the moves up, down, left, or right. We put them into a list that we call T, and move this over a little bit so we can see it. So the transition probabilities are T, in a list. And the only other thing we need to solve the MTP is the reward matrix. The reward matrix must also have a certain format. It must have the number of rows must equal the number of states and the number of columns must equal the number of actions. So in our case, we have an eight by four reward matrix. And you just simply put the reward, you repeat it across a row for any particular state. So for state S4, the rewards were minus 10. State S7, the rewards were plus 10. Okay, so there's our reward matrix. That's all you really need to solve an MDP using MDP toolbox. It's a good idea to check it using the MDP check function. And if you've defined it properly, if the dimensions are correct, you'll, it, you'll get an empty string. When you run MDP check, it'll return an em empty string, which means everything is OK. So now we're going to use MDP policy iteration function with those two parameters, transition matrices and the reward matrix. And we'll start off with just a discount, a middle range discount factor of 0.5. The discount is gamma. So we'll come back to that soon. So let's do this. We run it to solve. And we look at our object that is output by this function. It's a list. And in that list, we get the value, the resulting value function. We get the resulting policy in terms of the number new enumeration up, down, left, or right. 
number of iterations is how many times it had to go through this eva evaluate and proof cycle in order to arrive at a converged value function that doesn't change much and so we stop. And the time difference is just the time from, the, I believe, the third iteration to the second. Okay, so let's look at the policy. That's what we're interested in. And we can pull that out with n pol dollar sign policy. So there it is. But what we really want are the names. And so we'll tag them with the names. Up, left, down, up, up, right, right, up. Well, what does that mean? Well, what it means is if you're in S0, the best move is up. If you're in S1, the best move is left. If you're in S2, the best move is down, and so forth. We'll come right back to that in just a second on a slide where it's easier to look at. But let's also look at the, the value function. This is the optimal value function. And note the strong negative value for being in state S4 and the strong positive value for being in state S7. And that's what we should see. So here's a graphic of our optimal policy for the moving upon example. The blue arrows indicate the optimal policy that is the optimal state action moves beginning from S0 and navigating up to S7, whereas the dotted arrows indicate the state action pairs for S1 and S2 and S4. Note that S2, the optimal policy is to move down. And why is that? Well, by moving down, there's no chance that you will make it to S4 where there is a reward of minus 10. And ultimately, if you keep trying to move down, ultimately you will move to S1 and then you'll be swept up in the other state action pairs and make it all the way around to S7. So what did we do in this video? We examined policy evaluation and iteration. We specifically looked at the state value function and at the state action value function. And we illustrated this with a specific example in R of moving upon.